everybody. Welcome back to the 2017 World Championship. If you, could, if you couldn't tell, there's a ton of excitement in the room right now. <laughs> it's, it's a madhouse in here. You can just hear it and see it in everybody's voices. It's a tournament unlike any other. It really is. We started things off with the uh, amazing rendition of Passionate Duelist from the original series. Loved it. Shamisen and the DJ was nice. fantastic. It was one of the coolest things I've ever seen. And I think that really sets the mood for what we're about to see down here today. So we've got three, not one, not two, but three final matches for you to decide who will be the world championship right. here in Tokyo. And we're going to be starting things off on the Dragon Duel side. That's right. We have uh, Ryan, Yu. Ryan Yu dueling against Rafael H. Uh, you got here with a rather unconventional deck. The chain burn deck that we saw uh, earlier uh, it, when we featured the Dragon Duelist, where we saw him use Balance of Judgment for seven cards. It was pretty fantastic. Uh, it was definitely one of the highlights of the weekend. And we'll see if he can replicate it again here. A really fantastic choice, really, the burn deck. Yeah. Although his opponent famously said beforehand, I'm not worried about burn. He did. Uh, he, he scoffed at the fact that uh, Yu is running a burn deck. Uh, we will see if he regrets those words or if he crushes you as easily as he predicts. Now, I think part of going to depend on whether or not Ryan Yu knows about it. Because if he knows, he's going to be really motivated to win. <laughs> I, I would imagine so. So, we're still a few minutes away. We have a little bit more uh, action coming up. Uh, so, what we didn't see you use is Dice Jar in his previous feature match. Uh, and as one of the most interesting cards in his deck, I am hoping it makes an appearance. Oh. Hello. Hello. So, Dice Jar, you said. Dice Jar. Dice Jar. I love the excitement in this room. Makes it a little hard to commentate over, but yeah, it is amazing. You can't see it from our perspective, but we've got essentially an entire cheering section up above us. It's true. With these things. <laughs> and everybody's going mad. And it's really a wonder to watch. <laughs> I, I've never seen a tournament like this in the United States. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let me tell you, I love it. The only thing that can make it more crazy is if you see your game actually finish off with Dice Jar. So Dice Jar yeah. is this kind of famous card back in the Chain Burn days where it would pretty much completely randomize the outcome of a duel. Both you and your opponent roll a die when it flips. Whoever has the higher roll wins the roll and will inflict damage to their opponent equal to 500 times the roll. But in the case that the roll is a six, however, tell what happens. 6,000 points of damage is inflicted to your opponent unless your opponent also rolled a six. In that case, you just keep going until somebody uh, gets it. So, will we see that? I mean, it's a one-off. It's not necessarily a thing that's going to happen. I heard he does side deck it out a lot also, so if we don't see it in the first duel, we might not see it at all. And that's actually part of the strategy of the whole card, is that it's in there for game one in the case that you get lose a die roll or get an unfavorable matchup, and you just need something in there that can give you a chance to just steal a game. So you lose the die roll, you make up for your luck with dice jar. Exactly. <laughs> It all comes in waves, you know. Yeah. Well, it looks like we're going to start bringing our players to the stage momentarily. The energy in this room is amazing. Uh, amazing. Oh, so uh, that's what we forgot to talk about. Hafael. So Hafael made it all the way here with a combination of pretty much a bunch of different good decks. Yeah, his, his deck is also unlike any other. He's got Kaiju. He's got True Dracos. He's got Alistair the Invoker and the Invoke Monsters. There's just all sorts of stuff in there. He just packed every good card he could find. 
yeah. in there. I think and it all fits in uh, 42 cards, even with all that stuff. I think he's the only duelist actually using Interrupted Kaiju Slumber, which is limited to one for this tournament. Yeah, and that's probably one of the reasons why you're not going to see a whole lot of it. But he's got it, and it's taken him all the way to the final so far. How much did the Kaijus really help in a matchup against Burn? Uh, probably not a lot. It can get rid of the Time Lord, but... Oh, the Time Lord's already done its damage. You had to draw. You true, yeah, yeah that's true. Field. You can just preserve, your you can yeah. preserve your graveyard, right? Mm. You can preserve your graveyard, though, if necessary, which yeah. could be valuable. And I do like how... Uh, I mean, we saw yesterday Magician of Faith getting back Card of Demise after playing Card of Demise. That was pretty fantastic. So I guess we can get rid of Magician of Faith as well. That's true. Dice Jar. Dice Jar. But what you got to watch out for is if you hit Backjack, because then you give your opponent an actual monster that they could do something useful with in addition to sending Backjack to the graveyard. Then you rearrange the cards and dig even deeper for stuff like, say, the devastating Ojama Trio. That yes. was the uh, catalyst for Balance for Seven. Yes, it also enhanced the Just Desserts and the Secret Barrels. Mm -hmm. So Ojama Trio in yesterday's fe uh, feature was a huge impact card that is likely to repeat its power in this feature match. It is highly likely. So why do we think that H is not afraid of Burn. What in here makes you think, you know, Burn's not so big a deal? That is a great question, and to be honest, I don't know. <laughs> um, that, that's a valid answer, because honestly, I'm not seeing it either. Yeah, I, I don't see anything that's particularly powerful against Burn other than maybe Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, which he does play three copies of. That's good against everything. Uh, yeah, but it's especially good against Burn, which runs a lot of cards that draw cards, and that have a high impact when drawing cards, like Card of Demise to draw three cards. Or right. balance of judgment to draw seven cards. And being able to stop that is incredible. So uh, that's certainly one thing. Uh, uh, other than that, I really don't know. I am Rafael Reich. I have 13 years, and I am from São Paulo, Brazil. Uh, I've had a lot of duels. I've had a lot of difficulties in some duels, but in the majority, I think my meta-call meta was very correct. I was able to hit what I was going to play against, which helped me a lot in the games. At the end, FAMA! I'm Ryan Yu, I'm 12 years old, and I'm from Toronto. This might not sound the most professional, but it's highly luck-based. Honestly, I, I think it's already great to have be on day two. Uh, I hope I can win, but I'm not sure. I don't really have a plan, just go with whatever happens. The conditions are very harsh here in Tokyo. The heat is incredible. The humidity makes it feel like you're breathing water. And that has really has a chance to take a toll on your cards. And the room is packed. Yeah, the room is packed, and that's not really helping either. So, it's been really a battle to keep everybody's cards in pristine condition as they play throughout the tournament. And just being able to find the replacements and keep it going has been a challenge in and of itself in addition to being able to actually play your matches. So it's been kind of a test of endurance, just not just for body and mind, but for your tools of the trade as well. <laughs> but uh, everyone made it out alive, and we are here with the finals competitors for each division. Mm -hmm. So 
We heard the, uh, that uh, Ryan Yu doesn't really have a plan, but do you believe that? I don't believe that. I don't believe that for uh, a second. I, I don't think a, uh, someone without a plan would make it to the finals like he did. And he, I don't he, believe him when he says it's highly luck-based as well. Uh, he played very skillfully, so uh, he really, I think really did. he might just be a little modest. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, it's luck that you eventually get to your draw cards, but the skill part of it is making sure that you know how to stay alive long Yes. Enough. Remember, in his last feature match, Ryan, he was at just such a massive disadvantage that everybody was thinking, there's no, there's no way he's going to pull this one out. But he was able to manipulate his cards correctly. He made some good choices with Absolute King Backjack, rearranging them to get threatening for it, to stay in the game further. And the knowledge he got there let him figure out how to proceed just to stay in there long enough to get to a bigger impact card like Balance of Judgment, and later to the second Balance of Judgment, which was the one that caused all the uh, final damage. Yes. It's not an easy deck to play. Mm -hmm. It's pretty hard to pilot, and even the slightest mistake can have a huge impact on the outcome of the duel. And like we said yesterday, that's another reason why Burn is often the deck that cried wolf. A lot of people yes. say they're going to play it, but when they finally sit down and say, all right, I'm going to learn Burn, they give up very quickly. Things like knowing which order to chain your cards, when it's okay to just burn something off for damage and open up a zone without having a further plan for it. How many monsters do you even play? Do you even try to interact with the other player's deck in a way that a regular deck would? That's an interesting question. Most, de most decks, uh, burn decks, opt not to. And uh, use deck has very limited interaction. But indeed, it has some, like Lazy on the Time Lord, for example. Yes, interacts when your opponent draws a card. Mm -hmm. And it also interacts to get rid of the fuel for Masterpiece. That's right. Case. A Masterpiece could start, yes. start picking off your cards before you can even play them. Haste ha does use Book of Moon and Book of Eclipse. Mm -hmm. um, those are cards that might interact well with Lazy on. Yep. But um, that's just one card out of the deck. That's true. That is true. Uh, for the most part, his cards don't interact well. And uh, the Chain Burn decks, like use really thrives on that. Mm -hmm. That's the reason to play it. It's because you anticipate your opponents are going to build decks uh, that are optimized to beat what they anticipate to be popular in the tournament. As we talked about all weekend, Dinosaurs and True Draco uh, proved to be the dominant forces in both uh, the Dragon Duels as well as the main tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, and most duelists built their decks with tech cards that defeat them, or at least attempt to defeat them. When you're paired up against a burn deck, uh, your cards usually don't line up as well. So where Haste gets his confidence against burn I'm uh, still thinking about it. I don't it. know. It could be. Now, I've been looking through his extra deck, for example. He's playing the invoked version of this deck, which means he's got you know, all the invoked monsters. Mechabug could be pretty good here, for example. That's true. Trading a card for an opponent's card can be really good if your opponent's card either inflicts finishing damage or a lot of damage that it will uh, get you to a critically low life point level or just cards that would uh, draw your opponent cards. But the thing that really interests me is that so normally you have Ash Blossom and Joy of Spring in your deck, or Ghost Row, Uger, and Snow Ramp. You're just using them for their monster effects. But I noticed just now that he's got a copy of Black Rose Dragon in his deck, that he could combine either of those tuners with Alistair to blast the entire field wide open, and then because it would have to combine with Alistair, he would have invocation for a follow-up play. That's good. However, a lot of the cards in the Chain Burn deck are chainable. Right. But even in that case, they're all off the field. So that is true. as long as the burn damage isn't enough to take you out right there, and your opponent doesn't have enough draw cards among that, those cards, yeah. you could give yourself an opportunity and land a Mechaba on the field afterwards. Yes, and I agree. I think I think Mechaba is uh, one of the stronger cards in this matchup, mm. uh, just for its continuous continued ability to continue, uh, negate your opponent's cards, especially when each of those cards is so valuable because the deck depletes its hand and field so quickly. One of the things I really like about Mechaba and the True Draco variants in particular is that the smaller True Dracos, uh, Dynamite Knight and Ignis Heat, they actually give you the choice of whether or not you want to add the cards to your hand or put them on the field. So if you have a case where you've got Mechaba out and also Dynamite Knight or Ignis Heat and your opponent activates an effect, you can actually take that spell and put it in your hand and make sure that you have a card in hand to send to the graveyard for Mechaba's effect afterwards. Yeah, that's actually a very interesting uh, interaction that I've never seen a duelist take advantage of by combining those monsters. Now, I haven't actually seen it in practice, but in theory, like preparing for this event, that's the sort of thing that actually came up just, just a few times. Yeah. But just a few times is enough to learn that your deck can do that, just in yes. case the scenario comes up. 
Uh, and you can get into a lot of scenarios where you might not know that something is possible. So you need to spend a lot of time studying with your deck. And That's if you true. take a look, we've got uh, we got comments from a lot of the players beforehand about what are the things that you think an aspiring duelist can use to improve their game. And Rafael says, here's, how, here's my tip. You need to practice a lot and study the different decks. And he's absolutely right. You really, really do need to do that. Very good advice. So some of uh, Ryan Yu's previous accomplishments include, of course, the Dragonal Championship in North America, and he also did pretty well at YCS Toronto back in 2015. That was his first event as well, so having a high finish there, yeah. if your first event is a pretty great start yeah. to your career, and now two years later, he's made it to the World Championship. So he really moved up in the world he in did. just a few short years. He's already at the top, and he's actually one match away from becoming the World Champion. And it looks like he's getting ready to start that match right now. We are shuffling up for Duel 1 of the finals of the Dragon Duel World Championship. <laughs> Rafael, he also started back in uh, 2015. One of his, he tells us that his most memorable event was the Dragon Duel Championship back at OYFS in 2015, and he says it's the hardest event that he's ever played at. And I wonder if that's still going to be the case when this event is over. I highly doubt it. <laughs> I, uh, I suspect that the World Championship will be a little more challenging. A little bit more difficult, but he did manage to run his way through the Swiss rounds with remarkable efficiency. He did, and that's why he's here. One thing that we talked about is how people actually start playing Yu-Gi-Oh! For a lot of people, it's the TV show. For me, and for you, and for a whole lot of people, it's the original series. But Rafael, yes. he started with GX. Wow. So we regularly you know, poll to see what the most popular TV series are from the Yu-Gi-Oh! franchise. And you know, the original series, it's always up there at the top of the list. But As right behind <laughs> it, it's always GX. And it's really amazing. Because you know, when I first saw GX, you know, I, I didn't really warm up to Jaden. I think because I was you know, a teenager at that point. I was a little jaded at the moment, too jaded for Jaden. But as you know, as I've grown up, I like Jaden now. He's all right. Jaden is all right. He's an all right guy. Uh, and and duelists tend to like elemental heroes as well, mm. so it's nice that his iconic monsters are also popular. Mm, heroes have always been pretty popular. I don't really expect they'll ever stop. All right, looks like we've got our uh, matchup just about ready here. We have our opening dice roll. And we'll get the official countdown in just a moment. Go. It's time to duel, and Ryan Yu wastes no time at all, setting his entire hand and passing the turn. I think that was to be expected. Terraforming comes down first for Heish. <laughs> and he comes up with Magical Meltdown. Magical Meltdown, the field spell for the Invoke deck. When activated, it allows you to add Alistair the Invoker to your hand. It also provides some protection from certain spell and trap cards, and uh, actually, I think monster effects as well. I believe it's a you can't chain, is it you can't chain to a fusion spell, that That's sort correct. of thing. None of that will be relevant here, though. No, there are no, uh, essentially nothing that uh, Ryan Yu is going to do to try to interact in that way. And you also can't Co activate wow. one. Wow, oh. he activates Cosmic Cyclone in his own main phase, giving up a thousand life points and letting you begin chaining his traps. See what he targets. All right, it targets this one. Threatening roar. threatening roar. Not the greatest. Not at all. But at least it didn't start a massive chain that would take out even more life points. Uh, yeah. Magical Meltdown's activated next, and he's going to go ahead and search for Alistair. Uh, 
That's not a great exchange for Reach because 1,000 life points is really important in this matchup. It really is. And That's five cards on the field, a secret barrel. Yeah. In a lot of duels, 1,000 life points when you're at 8,000 is almost inconsequential. Mm -hmm. This is not one of those duels. Normal summon Alistair. It's going to get invocation out of his deck. Is he playing only one? No, two invocation. I like that. Yeah. I like being able to have multiple invocations because it's not. You can play multiple per turn. Ah, and then he plays Book of Moon to flip Alistair face down. Now, Alistair gets its effect not only when it's normal summon, but also when it's flipped face up, as we saw quite a bit in the latter rounds yesterday. So he's going to get a card out of his hand that is useless against this deck, and he uses it instead to give himself more ways to dig through the deck. Is Book of Moon up? I don't really know. I don't think you really want it. Yeah, well, it, it, it would work against Lazion, right? Yeah, that's about it. And then he could either use a, a Kaiju to tribute it, or he could clear it with something like Slumber while it's face down. Um, but that aside, probably the second invocation is more valuable. Almost certainly. He wants to be able to get this duel done as fast as he can. He sends uh, Thunder King to Lightning Strike Kaiju to the graveyard along with banishing Alistair. Interesting strategy. It seems he might actually just be trying to reduce the number of cards he has yeah, he is. to limit the impact of Secret Barrel, uh, Just Desserts, keeping the monsters low, uh, and the other cards that count what he has in his hand and on his field. That has to, uh, basically has to be it, but I do wonder if maybe he wanted to keep the Book of Moon in hand as a spell to discard for Mechaba. Uh, that would certainly make sense. It's not like Brian Yu's deck doesn't have any spell cards. He's got plenty, and they're all really good. Three Pot of Duality, two Card of Demise, two Pot of Desires, and two Chain Strike, the card that gives Chain Burn its name. Heish might have another spell card in his hand that also does not interact well with you. It is indeed possible. Players are encouraged to shuffle very thoroughly in order to properly randomize their decks, indeed. especially at this level of competition. So it all kind of depends on what uh, Rafael has left in his hand. Monster is not super good. And we note that the, he hasn't uh, used Invocation to put Alistair back in his hand. So it does seem that uh, card count is something that he's thinking about here. So he couldn't attack due to the effect of Threatening War, so he simply passes his turn, and then you draws a monster and sets it. Hmm, I wonder what that could be. There's only so many monsters it could be, and you know which one I'm hoping it is. I know. <laughs> of course, even if it's Dice Jar, its effect may be negated. Well, that's interesting. Do you negate Dice Jar or do you take the chance? I guess if you're at 7,000, you negate it. Mm. It's, it's Dice, Dice Jar! Jar! Roll them. <laughs> Let's see what we got. Now Reach has a decision to make. You want to negate that. 50% chance this card actually hurts you. 50% chance that Reich is losing some life points. And a particularly low percent. He's letting it resolve. Oh, oh no, oh, he's no, not. He's not okay. He's using the Makava's effect. <laughs> and the question is, can he do it in the damage step? Let's find out. Does it negate the activation or just negate the effect? I believe it's the activation, which means he would be able to do it. Indeed. But let's check the uh, text just to make absolutely certain. <laughs> and he does indeed decide to negate and banish it. <laughs> That's unfortunate. <laughs> I was so excited to see that dice jar. All right, Ryan Yu fills up his back row once again and plays back to height. He goes there and attacks. Secret Barrel starts the chain. Heish decides whether he wants to negate it. Chain Link 2. He activates Makaba's effect mm -hmm. and decides he wants to negate the activation of it. Let's see what's next. 
I believe Macabre is a once per turn effect, right? It is. So he's sort of giving you free range to activate whatever else he wishes to activate. His secret barrel could just be could just be a ruse to get him to use the Mechaba early so that he can chain a bunch of stuff, like Ojama Trio, and just desserts. Reckless Greed, even. I don't know. What did he discard, then? It must have been Max C. It must have sent Max C to the Might graveyard. Just to get it out of his hand in response to Secret Barrel. I couldn't tell what monster he discarded. But he did negate it. Makaba attacks direct. Oh, no, he didn't negate no, it. No, he didn't negate it. He discarded a Max C to get a card out of his hand. Oh, to reduce the... Uh, oh, that's interesting. So he didn't want to leave himself vulnerable to something like Dimension Wall. Indeed. Uh, so he wanted to keep Makaba's activation uh, relevant and still active on the field and then instead just reduce the damage by 200 by using Maxi's effect. That, that, that's clever. Yu uses Wabaku to prevent the damage on the next turn. And uh, Raphael's able to keep on drawing cards. You know, the longer it takes you to be able to create a chain here, the more chance is that uh, Alfael is going to have the cards he needs to, to get rid of to negate them. And see what happens this time. It's also possible H does not have a trap card to discard, which is why he did not uh, negate Secret Barrel, in which case something like Dimension Wall would be a big deal. Yeah, he only has five traps in his deck total. Secret Barrel is activated and he takes another look at it. it does 200 damage to Heish for each card he controls or in his hand. He's trying to figure out how he can throw away some more cards. Chain Strike is activated next. That's good for 200 damage right now. But Mechva, I believe it activates. Next is Blazing Mirror Force. This is in response to the attack. That's the card he probably wanted to negate. Next is the second Chain Strike. Oh, wow. And as we've explained earlier, this is totally legal. That's right. When he activates the second chain strike, there's only one chain strike on the chain uh, below it. So there are five effects on the chain right now. Chain strike is the fifth. That's a cool 2,000 damage. Blazing Mirror Force, I believe, is going to do 1,250 to each player. So 2,000 plus 1,250, 3,250. A chain strike is negated in the secret barrel will hit him for whatever's in his hand. As our duelists will work out the math here. Yes, and while the uh, activation of Chain Strike is negated there, uh, it doesn't change the chain link number of the second chain strike because it's not removed from the chain until Mechaba itself resolves. Looks like the secret barrel will inflict 1,000 points of damage as Heish has one card on the field, Magical Meltdown, plus four cards in his hand. Indeed. And when we put that all together, Heish is down to pretty low numbers. 2,000 plus 1250 plus 1,000. That's 4250. Yeah. Should be down to 1750. 1750 is a dangerous number here. It is. One strong attack into a dimension wall, and that would be the duel. Or even something like a. Uh, if he could get his opponent to draw while he has Lazy On on the field on his first turn. That's true. Or even just something like Lazy On Secret Barrel, or Lazy On Secret Blast could get him there. Though he needs, you probably need one more card on the field, I think, for that to work. No, two more cards. Two, yeah. You need two cards. Okay. Heish gets Invocation back using his Alistair's effect. Yep, he's going to try to get another Mechaba down there. Uh, he will be able to do that since he does have the first one in the graveyard. So he has the light requirement already uh, in the graveyard to banish with Invocation. He, he plays two, correct? Yes, he does play two. So he uses Alistair to search for the invocation, activates it. 
And really, uh, it's nice to have that kaiju there, the uh, lightning strike kaiju. You can yes. see now why it's there for its attribute. That's true, too. So he banished that. He could have just banished the Makaba, though. That's true, he could. I wonder if he has a way to bring it back. I don't think he does. That would be interesting. Doesn't look like it. Hmm. In which case, it just makes no difference what he banishes. Indeed. Thanks to Makaba, Heishi's actually not in the worst shape. Nope, he's at low life. Yes, but, but he's got cards in his hand to discard, and Ryan Yu only has one card left. That's right. Unless it's something really good, like Carter Demise level, and he catches Raphael without a spell in hand, which honestly doesn't seem super likely, because I believe he has the second invocation. And if he doesn't have it now, he'll certainly have it on his next turn when he returns Alistair to his hand and is able to resummon it if he chooses to do so. Indeed. Heish must have seen Yu's seven card draw with Balance of Judgment. Yeah. Because he is being very reluctant to commit cards to the field. The scary thing is traps here. He's got so few traps in his deck, and he has to attack. That's true. He's not going to win without attacking. Only you can do that. Mm -hmm. Picks Alistair back up. But I guess the concern here is you got to finish it now as opposed to later. So there's no point in really... I don't know if there's a point in waiting to get a trap card to discard if you don't already have it because that just increases the chances that Ryan Yu's going to be able to pull another one out of his hat. Yes, there's very few cards you can draw that are actually just not useful. Most of them either deal damage or draw cards, and that's exactly what he wants to do, mm -hmm. especially with Heish at only 1,750 life points. Invoke Mechabo plus Alistair, that represents 3,500. Does he have a second Alistair? If he had an Alistair in his hand, he could actually just straight up win. Assuming no useful cards in the back row. Even another Blazing Mirror Force could do it. He has, yeah, I mean, he knows that it could do it too, so he switches to defense. And he's going to try and get through there with Alistair. One thousand. Ryan Yu takes it. Well, Hafiel taking no chances with Dimension Wall or another Blazing Mirror Force. He very likely does not have the trap card. Uh, to discard to negate one of those cards, which is why he's being so cautious. He might go for it this turn, though, because now yeah, it's a guaranteed he, win he can through. end it if it gets through. And I think it's probably worth the risk of losing by trying to win here. I think the uh, benefit of that outweighs the giving you the opportunity to draw one more card. Hmm. He's got six in hand. You see his hands are shaking a bit there. Yeah. Well, this is the World Championship Finals. It is there's, indeed. If there's a time to be nervous while dueling, this is probably it. Oh, he had seven cards in hand, and in the end phase, he, discard, he uh, discards Ghidorla. So he attacks with only Alistair, and then you draws Pot of Desires and banishes the top 10 cards of his deck to try to draw two cards, but Invocation negates Pod Desires, and now Yu is free to activate whatever he wishes. Yeah, if he's got the burn cards, he wins. If he has Card of Demise down even, or some some bluff spell card. Well, Demise is Demise will stop him from doing any damage this turn. This turn. But I bet it is, oh, it is Desserts. Just Desserts for a thousand. Does he have the trio for game? I don't think he would activate Just Desserts he's if he didn't. It. Ojama Ryan Trio. You. Just Desserts with Ojama Trio. Baiting out, invoke Mechaba with Pot of Desires. He's able to pull this one out.
We see that you did have balance of judgment, but because Hayes played around it the entire duel, he wasn't able to activate it. Smart play from Hayes there. But yes. it turns out that if he had just gone all in and attacked, he would have had it. He would. Uh, he would have. He would have. You're had right. It. He all he had was the Ogama Creo, the just desserts. It's that classic scenario from Duelist Kingdom. It. Yep. Where if my attack, she's got him. Yeah. <laughs> but in the end, she he managed to bluff her out of it with his monster recovery card. Mm -hmm. So things like that do happen in real life. Yeah. Although yeah. I'm, uh, I'm still a little disappointed about the dice jar. Definitely the right move. <laughs> Not trusting it to a die roll. Although, at the end of that duel, use life points was indeed below 6,000. It was. So that die roll could have actually cost him the duel. Indeed. If Hayes had rolled a six, would have been a totally different game. Well, I don't think we're ever going to know what happens there unless, uh, unless you decide to keep dice jar in. Uh, he may. <laughs> he, he could do that. Sort of worked out in the first duel by uh, forcing a Kaba activation. Mm -hmm. His side deck's very interesting. He's got a couple of fairy tale monsters, both Luna and Snow. But then he also has things like Jinzo and Psychic Shockwave. I saw that. I have no idea what that's for. The only thing I could think of is because he's playing Burn and thinks Burn is such a strong deck, mm -hmm. he might think that some of his opponents might be playing Burn. Oh, that's I true. feel like it's uh, I feel I feel like that's common at the World Championship. There's some sort of effect where you feel like you have discovered the best deck in the World Championship format. Mm -hmm. So you think other players in the tournament who are just as skilled as you are and also the best in the world mm -hmm. might also be playing that same deck. Hmm. That um, makes sense. Could you think of any other reason you would want to include Jinzo and Psychic Shockwave in your side deck? Not really. Especially considering the dinosaur plays one trap and it's a counter trap that you can't chain it to, and the, all the rest of them are continuous, and they can just be tributed off anyways to destroy Jinzo. So I think you're correct there. What I'm imagining is that he's trying to create a scenario here where his opponent plays the first trap, then he chains with Psychic Shockwave, and then all of his other cards. So all of his cards resolve, and then Jinzo is special summoned to negate the original trap that the opponent played. So that presumably that's a, that's the scenario you would try to create if you were going to bring in Psychic Shockwave here. Yeah, but and his opponents also might side deck out all of the cards that can destroy Jinzo easily. Right. So in this case, though, I think he's going to put in his Zafion the Time Lords. Zafion is basically there for decks like this. But we didn't see the true Draco half of it. All yeah. we saw were the, uh, well, third of it. All we saw were the Invoke Monsters and the kaijus and the invoke monsters are really what he wants there that's what gives him the power to dictate which cards you is able to play and which ones will not resolve that's true and Zephyr Zaf is probably not that strong against the invoked portion of the deck no it's definitely it doesn't do anything because they're monsters he would need uh he would need Medeon or Camion, and he's actually not playing either of them it's a little interesting that he wouldn't go with Camion since it's basically spot removal of any of those cards plus an extra 500 points of damage. Yeah, we saw Matayon in a lot of burn decks in the past, and mm, so I, yeah, I was actually true. most intrigued by the fact that he's not using Matayon the Time Lord. I would think that he would want to go for the utility. If he could only play one more Time Lord in his extra deck or had to sacrifice one of the Zafions, I think he might take the higher utility Camion as opposed to the higher potential impact Metaion. That could be. I've been, I've been playing with a lot of Time Lords, and that's really the question is, do you want Medeon in there, or do you want Camion? Especially if you're going to put in, like, an entire package. Like, sometimes you'll side in, you know, three Time Maiden and a set of whatever Time Lords you need, and you generally don't put in any more than three Time Lords, so you kind of have to pick and choose. Uh, Heish does have a couple of cards he will want to put in. Um, I think we'll probably see Groll and Lockbird come in, just yes. because it's better than a lot of the cards that currently in his main deck. Yes, so that's one of the things where, let's say, Pot of Desires happens. He could activate that afterwards and then stop any follow-ups from Card of Demise or Rexus Greed or anything like that. Right. Uh, and in addition, I think we'll maybe we'll see Forbidding Chalice come in, just because it's a card that can negate all of the monster effects as low as the deck is on monsters. Um, it's probably better than stuff like the Kaijus. Hmm. Although, the thing with the Kaijus is that those are what gives him, well, they help him get access to a bunch of different invoke monsters. That's true, So, for true example, too. without Thunder King in that first duel, what does he really have? Uh, that, that is true. Um, so, maybe Thunder King will stay in. He's probably going to sub out Max. Well, maybe he'll keep Maxi because he can discard it whenever you need to. 
it's really interesting. I don't think he needs Book of Eclipse. Mm, perhaps not. I don't think he wants uh, Ryan Yu drawing any extra cards. No. Or flipping his monsters twice. Solemn warning, the cost might be a little hefty. Yeah, if he could swap that out, for, does he have any other traps to use? I mean, Dimensional oh, Barrier a good is a question, card that he actually. could just activate and get off the field if he needed to. Oh, and discard with Makaba. Or discard with Makaba. That, I, that's the thing with taking out warnings, you get fewer traps in your deck. But yeah. I think he might just put in some traps that he's going to play otherwise. I, th I think you're discards. actually right. It actually might not be a bad idea to just put in traps that don't really have an impact when activated mm -hmm. because they're powerful when discarded to Makaba. And uh, I do actually like his approach in the first duel to try to lean on Makaba to win, and yeah. after Makaba was destroyed, summon a second Makaba. Uh, I do think that's actually the best way to approach this matchup. And it looks like he is having Ryan Yu go first for him to cut him off from an extra card. Activates Pot of Duality, showing Threatening War, Secret Barrel. And Pot of Duality. Pot of Duality. And he takes the second Duality, putting the traps back into the deck. Unfortunately for you, he can only activate one Pot of Duality per turn, so we will not see that be activated right now. That's an interesting choice, considering that he's effectively down a card now for the rest of the turn. <laughs> we don't know what's in the rest of his hand, so he might not have had anything that interacts well with the other two cards. Hmm. It's times like these when you really wish you had a judge there with an iPad <laughs> entering all their cards because the suspense is killing me. I want to know it, what he's got over there. It just adds to the excitement, Jerome. Hmm. I'm just going to keep thinking about it while he's shuffling. What, what makes you take the second pawn of duality? Are you just going to set it and go for like a card of demise play or something and then have duality to filter through your cards again next turn? I doubt that. If you, I think if you had a card of demise, you'd probably want the secret barrel. But my guess is barrel. that he needs something that interacts. Uh, what was the third card? Do you remember? Well, Threatening Roar. Threatening Roar. Uh, yeah, I guess if he had a card of demise, I, I think he would probably take uh, secret barrel. But let's see. Yeah, so that's four. My guess is he's digging for something that will actually interact with his opponent's monsters. Uh, mm. to hold them off permanently, mm. like a Blazing Mirror Force, for instance. Mm. Interesting that he kept a card in hand. What could that be? It's probably the duality. Oh, you don't think he said it? Uh, I doubt it. Mm. Terraforming is activated. Goes and gets Dragonic Diagram this time. Interesting he's taking a different approach to this duel. Unless he already has Meltdown. Though, Dragonic Diagram destroying True Draco's spells could help him start picking through those cards. Yes, anything that's unchainable and gets hit is a loss to you, especially when his cards are so valuable to him. Plus, we saw H uh, heavily rely on a strategy that involves destroying his own cards or just getting them off the field Indeed. to limit the impact of cards like Balance of Judgment and Secret Barrel. Uh, so, Dragonic Diagram actually plays well into that strategy. So the unchainables in Yu's deck are Blazing Mirror Force and Dimension Wall. Everything else can be flipped. Unless he sets a spell like Pot of Duality. Right. Now, assuming that he's not doing that, he's left nothing but chainables. Yes. But those are big impact cards. They are. Blazing Mir Mirror Force and Dimension uh, bar uh, Wall are actually two of the cards that deal the most damage with a single card. Yeah, and Blazing Mirror Force takes all the monsters off the field. Yes. Ooh, Pot of, of Desires Ooh. for H. One last tenth card hiding there. Draws two more, adding more cards to his hand. Could be dangerous. It's interesting because the cards Haish needs are very specific. They're cards that will interact well with used chain burn deck, so he wants cards that negate like Makaba. Hmm. A lot of the cards in his deck just won't help him. And he does have Magical Meltdown, so he's going to go get Alistair. That's a good start. That just gets even more cards on his field, though. I wonder if he's getting set up here. Well, he could always get rid of it with the diagram he added to his hand earlier. But that just replaces it with another card. That's true, but that it gets the diagram out of his yeah, hand. In that, in that case... <laughs> I thought you meant the Alistair. No. The, uh, yes, that would get rid of Magical Meltdown. Yes. 
All right. Alistair is normal summoned, and that's going to go ahead and get an invocation. Sends that to the graveyard, and now he does indeed activate Dragonic Diagram. Diagram destroys. Looks like a spell in his hand. Yeah, it's a spell, but I'm not entirely certain what spell it is. To get Masterpiece. A Masterpiece immune to traps would be pretty good. Well, it won't stop the Dimension yeah, Wall, but it'll get through wall. Blazing Mirror Force. Right. The Dimension Wall affects the player rather than the monster itself. Yeah, and if you could come up with, like, Masterpiece Mechaba, that's pretty good. That would be insane. Or he might just throw it away to make Mechaba. He will. So different cards, but the exact same result. Invoke Mechaba is going to be on the field. Masterpiece seems like it would actually be fairly strong to summon in this matchup. Just hitting your opponent's cards the turn your opponent sets them yeah. so he can't shame them. Uh, yeah, I he hasn't had any continuous cards, though, has he? Uh, that I don't know, because I, I, I don't know his hand. So, um, he yeah, certainly could have gotten any. to them, though, with the diagram, eventually. It's true. There is no eventually, though, in this particular matchup. Well, it would take at most two turns. <laughs> so if he could spare the two turns, he could have made uh, a long-term strategy involving Masterpiece. Mm -hmm. Although a Maccabi now is also good. All right, handing off to the judges for one final cut. Yeah, it really depends what's in his hand, and we don't know what's in his hand. Kaba attacks. He must feel safe against Dimension Wall, and there it is. Dimension Wall is a trap card that makes your opponent take damage instead of you. He takes it. He must not have a trap card in his hand. He's, he doesn't have that many. I don't, and I, I'm thinking maybe he didn't slide any more in. Yeah, he has five in the main deck, and if he uh, took your strategy, which I think actually would have been a very good idea, although. Uh, not easy to think of, he would have eight because he had in the barriers. Indeed, he takes uh, 25 there. Balance of Judgment. Secret, ba secret Blast, an Absolute King Backjack. None of those cards are too good here. I like Backjack, though, because it blocks an attack, possibly forces a negation. That's true. And if it just goes to the graveyard, do you think they're really going to negate the effect to rearrange your top three cards? Is that worth a card? Certainly not that effect. Uh, what if Macabre can also negate the Banish effect, right? It can. So I, I think that one it's more likely to negate because it's essentially a draw card. But let's say um, that your opponent doesn't negate and you get to rearrange your cards. Well, now you know they're probably going to negate the other one. Right. So you can rearrange your deck in such a way where you put the card that you actually want to draw on top instead and kind of mind game them that way. That is risky, though, because he also might leave Macabre's effect open to try to negate a different card. Uh, so there's no guarantee he'll actually negate Jack back. Oh, I think when you actually make that play, you have to be very decisive in your mannerisms when you're yeah. doing it. So if you're going to try to pull it off like that, you rearrange your cards, slam them back on top of your deck, and then hurl back <laughs> Jack into your banish pile. All right, it is still it is still Ryan Yu's turn. At a minimum, Jackback will absorb one attack. Exactly, and that's so valuable as well. It is. Sets so two cards, monster and a spell or trap. Activates Dragonic Diagram's effect. And he's destroying Droll and Lockbird in this instance. See if that comes back to haunt him later. It might. I feel like it's very hard to actually activate Troll and Lockbird here. Yeah. In this matchup, um, because if they put a bunch of cards on the chain that all draw cards, you don't even have an opportunity to discard it if they haven't already drawn in the turn. I mean, you use it against 
Yeah, you use it against Pot of Duality, could you not? Uh, you could after they add the card. Right. Uh, and then they can't draw any more cards. But uh, I don't know. I don't know if, if Chamberlain really draws a lot of times in a turn. It draws a lot of cards in a turn. Right. So, but if they say duality for card of demise, yes, you would just throw it down right there because you know what's coming. Right. It, but then they won't activate the card demise. They'll have it for next turn. That, that, that's true. That, that's what it, you it, want. Yeah. It's it's sur it slows them down. That, that's for sure. And now he's going to uh, tribute summon Dynamite Knight. Yes. Yeah. True Draco Heritage is getting tributed for it, and Balance of Judgment is sent to the graveyard yep. due to the effect of the Heritage. Not particularly relevant here, but it could have become relevant. Mechaba goes to defense to protect against Blazing Mirror Force. He must not have a trap card in his hand again. And attacks into Backjack. Backjack activates and he just negates it. With, uh, it's got to be with Mechaba. He... Oh, so oh, so he negates the rearrange effect because that banishes Jack back, right? Yeah. Since Mechaba banishes the cards, it negates, or do those cards have to be on the field for it to banish them? I, I don't think so. But it seems like he also wants to activate Dynamite Knight, which he cannot. So, Backjack is banished, and another card is not pulled out of the deck with Dynamite Knight. And we'll shuffle up, and the game will continue. Yes, the card can be anywhere to be banished by Makapa. It does not have to be on the field. Mm. That is clear from the text of the card. I like the. I think I like the setup a lot better than the last one. I mean, it helps obviously that you have the increased power of Dynamite Knight here, 2,800. Plus, you can get oh, you can get traps out of your deck. This is what we mentioned before. Yes. Is being able to get the traps out of your deck to negate with Mechaba. Yes. He just sets a card and passes. The thing he has to remember, though, is that he can't have the trap activate search with dynamite, but also negate the trap in the same chain. Right. That's you cannot do. So you will want to make his first chain of trap cards really count. Because that's the chain that's going to get through. Unless H just top decked a trap card, uh, which is unlikely given the low number in his deck. He takes 2,800 here. That's a plus 300 boost from Dragonic Diagram. And Halfnail Heist takes the lead by 300. Looks like they missed the 300 boost. Darkhold activates and it resolves. Wow, no spell card in Heish's hand. So that must mean his hand's all monsters. Yeah, if there's no traps and no spells, that's all it could be. It's got to be all monsters. That's rough. Did he use a Dynamite's effect? He didn't. So he could have gotten a trap. He didn't. He forgot. He was, still of, yeah. mm. he was still stunned by the dark hole. Mm. That happens. Yeah, that's unfortunate. That might actually cost him. How you react when the crazy top decks happen is part of the game. And just being able to stay in the moment and make the right move is important if you want to be the world champion. And it looked like they were pointing out the extra damage from uh, Dragonic Diagram right there. Yes. They should be able to fix that pretty easily. And now we're activating Diagram's effect. Destroying Droll and Lockbird. Again. Now he gets a spell card, Disciples of the True Draco Phoenix. Now he could get another Tribute Summon here. Presumably he's got plenty of monsters to do so. He must if that's all that's in his hand. But he plays a lot of weird monsters in his deck too. He plays a lot of Kaijus. They're not all True Dracos. It's true. So he activates Invocation first. 
I think we will very likely see him banish Alistair with the Makaba or a different light monster if he has one in order to summon another Makaba like he did in the first duel. Yeah, presumably he's just making the second one. Don't see any real reason not to there. Yep. And it's nice to have a spell in your hand now so that you can prevent things like the Dark Hole from happening. Yes. It's unfortunate he didn't grab a trap card though with Dynamite. And he's thinking about which position to summon it in. Attack mode or defense mode. He's already attacked this. No. No, he's not attacked this turn. So he puts in attack position. Activates Disciple. And he's going to put three cards back into his deck to draw one. So I believe he has Heretic, Masterpiece, and Dynamite, right? Yes. Yep, so since those are the only three, that's what's going back. I think that might leave him with no spells, though. Mm. It very well might, because if he didn't have a spell for the Dark Hole... And he picked that one up off of... off of a Diagram, then... Perhaps he does not. Yeah. Well, he might draw one here. Oh, he just used Invocation, so he doesn't have that yet. Right. He might have drawn a spell for his turn. Hmm. Also possible. All right, we shuffle up. He's going to get to draw one more card. And we'll see if it's a good one. Part of the cards. Declares an attack. Secret Barrel is actually oh. in his train like one. Uh oh. Hayes did not want to see him reaching for a card. Uh oh, look out, Alfael. Chain link two is Ojama Trio. Now Makab is going to activate. He gets he's, rid of. I bet he's got the other trio. Ring of Destruction. It's during his opponent's turn. It certainly is. All right, so Ring of Destruction is going to hit both players for 1250. Ojama Trio is getting banished. Is it half for Ring? Oh, no, no it's, it's, it's total. It's I think the it plays full in amount. Force. Yeah. It's the full amount. So uh, uh, 2,500 to each player, and then the yes. secret barrel damage as well. Yes. Uh, Ring of Destruction has had its effect changed since it was first released. Indeed. Uh, it's just not changed to what I thought it was. Yeah, but the uh, spirit of the card is still very much the same. <laughs> card of Demise off the top. Oh, and my goodness. Amazing. Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring negates it. Hayes uses Dragonic Diagram to destroy his uh, disciples of the true Draco Phoenix. Mm, and I should have uh, some smaller life points here because of the secret barrel damage. And time has apparently just been called in the round. 40 minutes have elapsed. And Raphael has turn zero here. Wow, that's really bad for Heish because he needs to win this duel just to get it to a third duel. Indeed. And then he's at a huge disadvantage in the third duel because the burn deck easily inflicts damage early on and generally struggles in the late game, which won't exist. That it does, and there won't be any more side decking allowed either since it's happening after the 40 minutes are up. He draws an extra card. The score should be 27 to 2,000. Double Tribute, Masterpiece hits the field. I think this is the end for you. Unless he draws Dimension Wall. Uh, Actually, even no, still, even it'll even be though. destroyed in the end phase. All right. Masterpiece activates, and you immediately concedes. All right. So I, I thought you had him there when he pulled Card of Demise off the top of the deck, but all of the monsters that Raphael had been holding the entire game happened to be ones he yes. could pitch from his hand, like Droll and Lockbird, and in the end, Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. And it looks like it's going to be a... Uh, we're going to get another roll to decide who's going to go first in this last game, since it is happening after the 40 minutes have elapsed. So no side decking. Oh, don't forget your Dragonic Diagram and Alistair, Raphael. You're going to need them. There you go. Yeah. 
Uh, I don't know if these duelists would really want a side deck entering the third duel anymore. Mm. Uh, anyway, I think that the way they side decked entering the second duel is probably how they're going to want to keep their decks. Well, unless there is a specific thing that you would do if you knew you were going first or second, yes. which you now do not. That's true. All right, so uh, the way this is going to work is as follows. These players will play at least four turns. At the end of those four turns, we will check the life points. Whoever has more life points is the winner of the duel, the match, and is the 2017 Dragon Duel World Champion. If we have a tie after those four turns, we will keep playing until the tie is broken. And at the end of the chain, which is of course important for this particular deck, at the end of any chain, if there is a change in life points, the duelist with more life points is the winner. Ryan Yu seems to have a clear advantage here. He does, and it's really going to depend on this dice roll here. I think he would want to give... I think he wants to go second here. Uh, to only give one attack Definitely, turn. definitely. That seems like the advantage here. Now, how does this work? Does the player who wins the die roll get to choose, or does the player who wins the die roll have to go first? Uh, they get to choose. They get to choose. Yes, yeah, second would definitely be a lot better for you. Yeah, this is a this is a tense situation. The entire Dragon Duel World Championship being decided on a four-turn extra duel. Hard to imagine higher stakes than that. And I do wonder how uh, Hayes will react to it, considering that the Dark Hole that he didn't chain to the Dark Hole with his Dynamite Knight in the last duel. I wonder if something like that, if the pressure could get to him again. It could. It certainly, a spell card a little earlier could have helped. All right, bottom desires comes up first. Looks like Yu is going first, but the pot of desires does resolve, so he does draw two cards. He's got a couple good ones there. It looks like a very strong hand. That's a threatening roar and just desserts. Oh, wow. I didn't even think about it. Cards like Threatening Roar and Waboku are incredible here. Yeah, look on his face says, yeah, I got this. Yeah. He's got a Jama Trio as well. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Oh, my goodness. I think he had two Just Desserts I saw, to go uh, with that Ojama Trio. Uh, I didn't see the second one. Terraforming is activated. And this is turn one. So Haitian only gets two battle phases, and he'll have to skip one of them because of Threatening Roar. That's the question, though, is do you, uh, do you take the damage in the first one and then just, if you have the lead, flip Wabaku for game on the draw phase? Uh, very likely. It really depends. If he can skip two of his opponent's battle phases, even better. Did he have Threatening Roar as well? Threatening uh, Roar and Wabaku? He has Wabaku. I, I, I only saw Roar. Yeah, I think he only has the Roar. But I don't know all five of his cards. Either way, oh, and you see the dimensional barriers. He did, in fact, side them in. Oh, very good play by him. Yep. He seems to have been very prepared for this match to play against Chainburn. Yeah, so I, I can see where his confidence yes. was coming from, but it looks like it might not be enough. Yes, and he did get it to a third duel already. Still to be decided. Sets a card. Tributes it. Oh, it's a trap, not a spell. Hmm. Ignis Heat is summoned. That'll just get more spell. Cosmic Cyclone's activated, really. Pays a thousand Pays life a points thousand already, life bringing points. him at a disadvantage. I don't know. He's now at a 1,000 life point deficit before you even activates any burn cards. I don't know about that. Just, Just as Earth is, is chained. I think Hush knows what's coming next. Do you activate the effect of Ignis Heat to build the chain even more for Chain Strike? I don't think you do in this Secret case. Barrel is chained. Now you definitely don't. Trio. Ogama Trio. Trio's next. Oh my goodness. That's three more cards on Haitian's field, and all three of them are monsters, adding 1,500 points of damage to just desserts. And another 600 to Secret Barrel. Oh boy, things are not looking good. 
the thousand points from uh, Galaxy uh, Cosmic Cyclone is just a bonus there. It really is. That's a lot of damage. And now he decides to gain the effect of Ignis Heat. He's going for it. Uh, which means he'll actually take an extra 200 points of damage from the secret barrel since the card is added to his hand at the top of the chain. He's got to be trying to get something else onto the field. He's in so much trouble right now. Which card was targeted by the Cosmic, uh, Cosmic Cyclone? I believe it was the trio. Okay. So he didn't get any use out of that. Hands over three tokens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's 1,800. Six on the field, three in the hand. Cosmic Cyclone still counts for Secret Barrel, even though it is destined to go to the graveyard once it resolves. So 18 and 2,000. Mm. 3,800 on top of the 1,000 from Cosmic Cyclone. That's pretty rough. That is. Doesn't get more painful than that. That was not a good turn for Heish. He can still try to get some damage in here. Maybe. He can try. He can certainly try. At this point, if you're you and he only attacks with the Ignis Heat, I imagine you just take the hit. And then in your opponent's draw phase, you can threaten and roar. He's going to draw another card. It's got to be a good one. Yes, he sent a an Apocalypse to the graveyard? Yes. So it's uh, one card. But he does need to shuffle first because he searched with Ignis Heat. What does he do to get out of this? I, I was I don't just think thinking that same thing. There's just not enough time. He only gets one more turn. Well, if he gets... The only thing that can really happen is that Ryan Yu can mess up. If he messes up with Threatening Roar and tries to activate it in response to the attack, he'll get nothing out of it. What's the restriction on Ogdama Trio tokens? They can't be tributed? Uh, can't be tributed for a tribute summon, I believe. And they do damage when they're destroyed. Right. It, it's tough. The only thing I can think of is maybe he'll be able to gain an additional normal summon, summon Masterpiece. And then with Masterpiece on the field, he'll be able to banish... Uh, not banish, destroy a card on his own turn as well as a card on Yu's turn, ideally hitting the Threatening Roar hmm. and landing two direct attacks on his next turn with really powerful monsters. And the uh, attacks will be boosted by a Dragonic Diagram, at least, so Ignis Heat is at 2,700. But without being able to tribute the Ogdama Trio tokens, as you are correct, they cannot be tributed for a Tribute Summon, uh, he would also need another card to set. And he's going here to get the extra summon and targets. Reckless Dino. Greed. Oh, Reckless ooh. Greed. Reckless, Reckless Greed is chained. This is actually quite good for Heish. Yeah. With the extra power bonuses, you got a 28 and a 27. That's 5,500 yes. damage. That'll bring you below his own life total, so it really forces you to activate the Threatening Roar to keep his uh, top decks live so that he, if he draws another card that can disrupt a battle phase, he'll win. He doesn't get to draw any more cards because of Reckless Greed. Well, he'll need it off the Reckless Greed. Yeah. Uh, all things considered, the Reckless Greed isn't too bad because he's getting two cards and only will have to get one draw phase since he only gets one more draw phase this game. I feel a lot better about Hay's chances now with that second Absolutely. true Draco on the field. Because now he has the pressure there. Oh, and if he uses Threatening Roar, which he does in order to preserve his life total, uh, Dino Mike gets to activate its effect to add a trap card to Hay's hand if he wants to. Skips his draw phase for the turn. Summons Zephion. Zephion, the Time Lord. And I think he's going to get it. I think wow. Ryan, you have it. Can't be damaged. Can't be destroyed. The only thing he can do is give him a Kaiju. A Kaiju would work, and we know he kept Kaijus in. Right? He at least kept the light one in. <laughs> yeah, card, card of, of demise. demise. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Unbelievable. 
He doesn't need a draw phase when he draws three cards with card of demise. Why not draw five cards in a turn and a half? And he changed his own max seed to the card of the demise, allowing him to pick up all three. Oh my goodness. Pot of duality lets him look at the top three and pick the one that can win him the duel. Well, let me see. Show him. That's a Desires, a Backjack, and Secret Blast. Wow. I think he took the Desires. Wow, I did not quite see that there. I'm still in a little bit of stunned disbelief over how good that Reckless Greed was. Unbelievable. All right, well, we'll see if uh, Ohio gets that chance to uh, attack at all. Pog Desires comes down. Still one turn left off Reckless Greed. Is that did he pick two up dark, dark holes? I think he did. Is Zephion also immune to your own spell and uh, trap cards? Uh, presumably, otherwise you wouldn't be playing it. Wow. He clears the field, and that also will do 900 points of damage to Hage, who's going to lose all of the Ogama tokens. Unbelievable. 300 for each. I'll go ahead and grab our uh, Zafion text there. Everybody loves Zafion. <laughs> I'm not sure Hage does. Yes, cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects, including your own. Yeah. That's H the classic Dan Posey combo. Activate <laughs> Odin. Okay, Dark Hole. H does gain the effect of Dynamite in order to get uh, True King's return from his deck, and it looks like he pays it face up. But he is in big trouble here. He's going to at least be able to reclaim a monster here. In the end phase, Yu doesn't have any cards to discard from his hand with a card of Demise's drawback. All right, he's going to special summon with True King's return to get a Dynamite Knight. And Reich, this is it. This is the final turn. That's, yes. Hage is at 2,300 life points. Now we'll see if you can even just finish it right now, not even let the turn end. Hage is thinking very hard, very, very hard indeed. It is turn three. He does, he does give him a have kaiju. the kaiju. If not for the dark hole, that would have been a big deal. And he gets to draw a card because Zapion was sent from the field of the graveyard. But his work is cut out for him. Reich is at 2,300 life points. That is a 5,700 point difference that he has to make up past Gadarlo. I can't imagine that this doesn't involve Masterpiece somehow. Uh, I agree. I, I think if there's a way to do it, it's probably with Masterpiece. He does have Dragonic Diagram, which could destroy the Crew King's return, which can take down the Gandala. There's every chance that he just loses to another battle phase stopper, though. Yeah, I mean, if he had the uh, Threatening Roar or uh, Wavoku, I think he would have activated it. Mm. There's no reason not to since this is the last turn of the duel. And he does indeed destroy the Crew King's return there, so we will get rid of Gandala. And he will add Masterpiece to his hand. So if, if he has the right cards in his hand to summon Masterpiece. It's got to be like summon Masterpiece and Alistair in the same turn and activate Invocation and Ryan Yu has nothing. I think that's that's the only way he wins this. Yeah, it, it's, yeah. Every play ba basically depends on you having nothing. Which is very unlikely. Masterpiece is out of the hand. I saw a brief glimpse of a trap. A true King's return. Checks his extra deck. I think he's thinking the same thing we are. 
He's got to get an Invoke Monster and Masterpiece on the field. Well, he has the Alistair. Alistair is okay. He summons it. He gets Invocation to his hand. You know, it's interesting that you didn't attack with Zafion to send the True King's Return back to the deck. Yeah, I was actually thinking that. I'm not sure why he didn't. He might have just thought that there's no way he could lose, so he didn't need to. Uh, and he might be right. There's the invocation. Are there any other light monsters? Activate invocation. 2,300 life points left. That's a good question. I don't think there are. Yeah, he has to give it a masterpiece. And he does. And he does have a trap in his hand. I saw it earlier. So that's good. He's going to need to get invocation back into the deck to get to play for damage here. He's, <laughs> he's got to get Alistair back and try to get in. Mechba's a machine. He attacks for 28. 28 and 35 will be... 28. Wow, I'm so excited I can't do math straight. Uh, 28 and 35 is what, 13 so plus 5,000 is 6,300. Why 35? Uh, I'm assuming he's going to discard for Mechaba. Oh, you're right. He has the Alistair to increase the attack discard points. Does he have double Alistair? Is one enough to, to 35, 28? It's not because he only has 2,300. Oh, we would tie no, it. It's 28 and 35. You're right. It would tie it. What's Ryan going to do? Wait, no. That's a, that would be 63, no? Activate Secret Barrel. No, it, it, 28 and 35 actually puts him ahead. Does it? How much is that? 67? I think it's 63. Leaves him at 17. Okay, 63. Yeah, leaves him at 17, so he is ahead. Secret Barrel can be activated now. I'm pretty sure Heish is not at 3,200 life points, though, as displayed. No, he's not. He's at 23. He's at 23 because of the Kanama tokens. So I think, Ryan, you might have just lost. Well, it depends. How much would Secret Barrel do? He would have had to play Secret Barrel earlier. He, he could do it in main phase two. But it could get negated now. It could have gotten negated before. Not if he changed it to Invocation. Oh, yes. Yes. That he... Yes. Does H definitely have the Trap card in his hand? I thought I saw it. So Secret Barrel will attempt to tie it up. Well, no. He has cards in hand also. The Secret Barrel will actually put him ahead. Yep. Four cards. That'll be 23 down to 11. He has one in hand? I think he has two. He's got two. Two, so he'll take 1,000. Change, change, change strike. Change strike. 800 more. But if he has a spell, he could reduce the damage. He would reduce the secret barrel damage. But I, th I think that's. I think it should be over, though. That If Heish is, in fact, at 2,300, the secret barrel damage alone if he even keeps one card in his hand, is enough to get H below 1,700. And he is a 2,300. The Yojama tokens were destroyed, and they recorded the damage. Yes, and that's it. That'll do it. Ryan Yu has prevailed in a nail-biter. Absolute. Absolute madness in the Dragon Duel Finals. Ryan Yu of Canada. Congratulations to Ryan Yu and congratulations to Canada. Says he believes it's luck. Clearly it wasn't. <laughs> he played a fantastic finals match. He did. It was a very close one. Though I guess the last card of mine is pretty good. That was pretty good.
That was an incredible match, and I don't think anyone predicted it. Ryan U of Canada brings Chamber. Takes it all the way. It was a long road. He had to go through Charlie Punch one more time in the semifinals earlier this morning. And now that he can finally relax and breathe again. Well, I tell you what, if that's the opening act, what do we have coming up next? Dual links. Dual links. So, we have just received word that our next match is going to begin in about 10 minutes. We will have the Dual Links World Championship final between Tut Pup and Timmy. And <laughs> I have a feeling that one's going to be a nail biter as well. So. It was widely recognized that Red Eyes was the deck to beat, was it not, for Duel Links? It seemed to be. A lot of the players agreed that it was one of the strongest decks. Many of them couldn't use it because they didn't have Red Eyes Insight or opted not to use it because they didn't have Red Eyes Insight or enough copies of Red Eyes Insight. Uh, but the two duelists in the final round are actually playing nearly identical decks, none of them Red Eyes. So it'll be a complete mystery to me as yes. to what's going to happen on this one. But you'll find out when we do in about 10 minutes. Don't go away.